the news, making sense of the headlines. Afternoons with Rob Breckenridge on 770 CHQR. Join the conversation by phone or text 403-974-8255. Out of town, toll free 1-800-563-7770. Afternoons with Rob Breckenridge, 770 CHQR. I think a lot of Canadian kids dream of growing up and becoming an astronaut. Uh, and I think it's important to, to let kids know that, that that's a realistic dream. If that is something you aspire to, don't give up on that dream. And in fact, the Canadian uh, Space Agency is actively looking for young people who, who have this interest to want to pursue this career. It is maybe not for everyone. It definitely takes a lot of work to get there. Uh, but our next guest can uh, speak directly to all of that. Dr. Jenny Saidi Gibbons from right here in Calgary uh, is indeed uh, an astronaut with the Canadian Space Agency, part of the NASA class of 2017 and is in Calgary, been speaking to students in the Alberta Teachers Association Science Conference about the Junior Astronaut Campaign. Jenny, so great to have you here. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, and you're on Twitter as well, Astro Jenny, yep, with the that's underscore, uh, J-E-N-N-I. Um, so where, where did uh, the idea of becoming an astronaut, when, when did that first kind of get, get in your head? It's hard to say when it really started because I remember being young and really, really interested in the idea of exploring I loved science. I loved being yeah. outside. Um, after a while, I started to realize that maybe I liked uh, science and creative problem solving. So something like engineering was a, a good fit for me. Um, but I remember really early on, I was only a couple years old, when my mom made a really big deal of the fact that we had a female Canadian astronaut. Yeah. And that was Roberta Bondar. She flew on the shuttle when I was, again, only a couple of years old. Um, and I really didn't recognize the impact of that early on at the time, but my mom really emphasized it. And I remember uh, making a scrapbook of news clippings. We, would, we did that together. We just followed her mission. And later on, I got a chance to see her speak. Really? And I think that had an impact on me, seeing, um, seeing a successful astronaut, someone from Canada, go to space. I thought that was really special. And so that really stuck with me, and that's how I kind of got interested in space initially. Yeah, well, and you, you look at someone like Roberta Bonda or Julie Payette as well, mm -hmm. kind of role models they are. Is, is that something that, that you kind of feel is, is on your shoulders to, to a large extent now? I mean, I definitely feel like I want to provide someone for young people in Canada to look up to, but um, it's regardless of what they're interested in, really. I mean, whether you want to be an astronaut or a science or engineer or any other kind of creative profession that people might be interested in, I certainly would like to provide that for people. But I think in Canada, we're really fortunate because we just have this enormous number of really wonderful role models to look up to. I mean, you yeah. mentioned a few of them. Uh, Julie and Roberta are absolutely exceptional and I mean, our current core and also previous astronauts that we've had in the core are pretty great. So what's the relationship then between the Canadian Space Agency and NASA? It's a very close relationship, yep. actually. So the idea of space travel has always been a pretty international one. Mm -hmm. The International Space Station, which is in lower Earth orbit now, has been there for about 20 years. And that really, that sustainability really speaks to how successful cooperation internationally has been for the space program. And uh, Canada has been a really, I think, excellent partner for NASA, not only because we share this this border and we collaborate right. on, on space exploration, but also recently Canada signed on to the NASA Lunar Gateway Project, and we are the first international partner to do so. So oh, wow. the Canadian Space Agency really has been, a, a, I guess, an enormous supporter for NASA. And so you're, you're based out of Houston then? Yep, right? that's correct. Uh, and so what is day-to-day uh, -day life like for you? Oh, gosh, that's a hard question <laughs> to answer, you know. Uh, it really depends on what my training is that day. So yeah. I've been in Houston for just over two years, undergoing basic training since um, my colleague Joshua and I were selected in July of 2017. And um, we have these sort of different kind of core segments of training. So everything from learning the Russian language, because oh, like really? I said... Uh, um, space travel <laughs> is an, an international endeavor, so half of the International Space Station is Russian. So you learn how to... How's uh, your Russian, by the way? Uh, how to show. <laughs> it's <laughs> okay. not bad. Uh, yeah, I'm learning. It's a tough language to learn, but you know what? It's really interesting. And you have to be able to communicate, um, especially with our, our cosmonaut partners. Yeah. So that's a big part of it. Uh, we fly very fast jets. That teaches you how to make decisions under pressure mm -hmm. in a crew of two. It's also very important working together. Um, we learn every system that you can imagine that keeps the International Space Station 
uh, in Earth orbit. So that's yeah. everything from creating a breathable atmosphere to producing power to water recycling. Um, we learn how to move the robotic arm. That's really the crux of Canada's contribution to the International Space Program, mm -hmm. Canada Arm 2. Um, yeah, gosh. So a day-to-day -day can be <laughs> can be anything from learning how to do a spacewalk to a Russian lesson to a flight in the jet. And by the way, is, is Houston where they keep the aliens or is that somewhere else? <laughs> well, I, I, can't, I, mean, I, can't, I can't speak to that. <laughs> All right, darn it. I thought I'd try. Um, so in terms of you going up into space, what's, what's the timetable for that? Actually, we don't know. So because space is changing so much, especially right now, I mean, we have these commercial partners which are looking to fly uh, crewed vehicles in the next year or mm -hmm. couple of years. Yeah. So that's SpaceX and Boeing and, and who knows who else might come up with opportunities there. Um, NASA has a new vehicle coming online. That's the Space Launch System. Um, so it's really difficult to say what opportunities are coming up on the timeline, specifically when I would fly in space. Um, but it, we know it's going to be a while. I mean, you have to do a lot of training before you get yeah. sent up, and I am a rookie. Uh, Josh and I are new, so <laughs> it's, it's going to be a couple of years, but we'll yeah. get there. Yeah. Well, and I mean, as you say, I mean, you're, you're, you're young. This is a really interesting time when it comes to space travel and to think where we're going to be in 10 or 20 years, right? I mean, it's, it's an exciting time, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think it would be very hard right now to put on paper with confidence where we are going to be in the next five to 10 years. Like you yeah. say, things are changing so much and really space is opening up. There mm -hmm. will be a lot oh, more yeah. opportunity, a lot like more vehicles. There'll be uh, different orbits that we could visit. The idea of going back to the moon or even a cislunar orbit's really interesting. So yeah. that, I mean, the exploration opportunities are going to be numerous, I think. That's yeah, tremendous. All right. So tell us a bit more about the Junior Astronaut Campaign. Absolutely. Well, Junior Astronaut Campaign is something that uh, the Canadian Space Agency has launched uh, recently, it came out of some support that we got from the uh, federal government in February. And really, it's to engage young people around the country, whether they want to be an astronaut or, like I said, really anything else. It's just to get them interested in space. And it's that first exposure that we really want to get them. So there are three streams to the Junior Astronaut Program. And the idea is recruiting young people uh, to learn about what it takes to be an astronaut. So the things that are important for my job in particular are things like... Uh, uh, nutrition and fitness, you have to be healthy to be an astronaut. Yep. Teamwork and communication, you have to be able to work together in these really small crews for long periods of time. Um, and science and technology. Obviously, you have to have a technical component to your job when you're an astronaut. So those are the three streams where we chose to develop activities that kids around the country can do either um, with different educational groups, their schools, community centers, clubs, things like that. So there are opportunities to get involved with these different activities that are online on the Canadian Space Agency website right now. Right, and as we mentioned at the outset, uh, you you uh, do indeed have a PhD. I do, yeah. In engineering, so so you did a lot of education, obviously. <laughs> I did, on, yeah. On top of everything else, now you you you're still well, you're still doing every day. I mean, yeah. it's still an ongoing learning process in a lot of ways, right? Absolutely, I love learning. I mean, that was that was important to me growing up, and uh, hopefully, I'm always learning something. Uh, but I mean, it, it's important too, and and there's a lot of focus these days on STEM, right, and getting kids interested in in technology and in science and math, and and obviously, I mean. Being an astronaut's one potential avenue, but but there's so many other great opportunities that kind of an education provides that even to you know get kids excited and interested in that. I mean, there, there's a lot of benefit from that. Yeah, absolutely. Like I I always try to talk about what I was interested in when I was growing up, and that was space to an extent. But I also was interested in in again just being outside. I wanted to be a geologist for a while, and eventually I chose engineering because. I really, really liked science, but there was also this creative element that I really enjoyed to it. So I always try and, and share, particularly about engineering, that it's not just this hard science that I think it has a reputation for, but it's a really creative problem-solving profession, which I think will attract a lot more people to it. But I would think when you're, when you're getting the message out to young people, um, you know, to say, I'm, hi, I'm, I'm here, I'm an, I'm an, I'm an engineer, mm -hmm. uh, okay, but you show up and you say, hi, I'm, everyone, I'm an astronaut. That gets their attention. <laughs> yeah, I get. A, I certainly get a lot more <laughs> questions about my current profession than my uh, my previous role working in a in a university. But um, you know, it's all exploration. It's all finding new things. Yeah, but it's you know, it's good for kids to have those dreams and and to know that if if this is something they dream of, it's it's definitely achievable. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Canada, we are really, really fortunate and we have put a lot of work into becoming a spacefaring nation. I mean, we have expertise 
in space that no one else has. And that's really exceptional and Canadians have an opportunity to get involved with that. So if students do participate in the junior astronauts program, which I hope that they do, because it's really cool. It's a lot of fun anyway. Um, there's an opportunity either for uh, a visit from an astronaut or another space expert to your school or community center or however you're choosing to participate. So we're gonna do a visit to it, one visit at least to each province and territory. And there's also an opportunity to win a trip to a space camp at the Canadian Space Ooh, Agency. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Am I too old for them? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I'll, go, I'll check the rules. <laughs> all right. So that's all at the Canadian Space Agency website, right? Yes. All of that will be on the Canadian Space Agency all website. Right. And as mentioned, uh, folks can follow you on Twitter at Astro Jenny, Astro underscore Jenny. Uh, speaking of Astro, sorry about your, your Astro. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate the condolences. Um, Thank but, you. Uh, no, thanks so much for coming in here today. Really appreciate this. Hey, no problem. It really, it really was my pro my pleasure. And and like I say, being um, being back in Calgary is special for me. I got a heavy dose of nostalgia when I come yeah, back to the city, eh? so it's nice. Well, there you go, Calgary's own uh, Dr. Jenny Sidey Gibbons with the Canadian Space Agency. Jenny, thanks again. Thank you. All right, we'll take a break here. My name is Rob Breckenridge. Back with more right after this.